Jätkame siit toidu teemaga. So we shall continue uh, with the food waste topic. We have uh, Taija Sinko from Finland. Uh, she is a research scientist in, in Natural Resources Institute in, in Finland. Um, her background is environmental technology and uh, she has many years experience in life cycle assessment and sustainability assessment of uh, bio-based products mainly food and uh, energy. Um, yeah, so, Daya, please. Thank you, and thank you for inviting me here. It's nice to be here in Tartu, because previously I have been only in Tallinn. Yeah, and I will tell you about our studies about food waste, uh, how much food waste is, uh, how much there is food waste in Finland, and uh, how we can decrease amounts of food waste and because always some amount of food waste is coming, what kind of business opportunities there would be. But first, a couple of words about LUKE. LUKE is shortening about Natural Resources Institute Finland, where I'm coming from. and. Our vision is a society built on a sustainable bioeconomy, and our expertise creates a knowledge space for sustainable growth and well-being. We are a research and expert organization, and our research is focused on four different areas, which are boreal green bioeconomy, blue bioeconomy, innovative food chain, and natural resources economy in the society. I'm coming from a team named Environmental Performance, and of course our goals are pretty same as whole Luke, but we are using method methodologies that are based on life cycle thinking, and we are doing life cycle assessments for different kind of products and services, and we are assessing environmental, economic, and social sustainability. And here is one nice picture about what the life cycle assessment means. So as you can see, it takes into account every steps from primary production and actually from the pr production of input, input to, to the primary production to the waste disposal and recycling. And of course, along the chain, we are going to take into account all energy and fuels and all of that kind of things used in the chain. Okay, then this is the same uh, thing that you was already told about in the morning, this waste hierarchy, which is a key indicator for material, material flow management. And it means that uh, food that is meant for human consumption should go to human consumption. And first goal is to prevent a reduction of uh, waste production and only small amount should go to final disposal. Some other ways to utilize it should be innovated. Mm. Okay, then about food waste. Is it really a big deal? Uh, FAO estimated that roughly one third of food, food produced, produced for human consumption is lost or wasted globally. It means that about 1.3 billion tons per year of food is wasted. And here is a nice picture about food waste, where you can see that um, in low-income countries, most of the food is wasted in primary production, so in beginning of food chain. And in high or medium-income countries, the majority is lost in consumption phase. Like in Finland, consumers um, produce most of the food waste. 
and McKinsey Global Institute estimated that global earning potential of food waste would be about 180 billion euros. So there is a big deal. So what is food waste? Here you can see the picture about how food waste is coming in different phases in the chain. So for first there is raw production, which means total harvest. But of course not everything is planned for human consumption because there, there's also feed for animals, some is going to energy usage or seed production. So from that part that is planned for human food, there is also something that is really going to human use and some non-edible parts like straw or root vegetable tops or something like that. So when you are going to harvest this edible part, there's always some harvest losses. And after harvest, there is post-harvest losses. And when you transport, uh, harvest it, for example, grain to the process plant for industry, there will be process losses. Then it will be transported to retail stores, grocery stores, and in that point there will be some distribution losses. And finally, when consumer buys food, only about half of that food will go to really um, human consumption. So there will be consumer waste. So total loss and waste is really a uh, big part of the total harvest. Then food waste in Finland. In our studies in Luke, we have estimated that avoidable food waste in the Finnish food chain is about four to 500 million kilograms per year. It means that it is about 15% of the consumed food. And direct cost of this is over one billion per year. Mm. And here is a picture how food waste is divided in different sectors in food chain. So you can see that my, my majority is from households, 32%. And after that, food in industry produces 21% of food waste. And restaurants and catering is 18% and retail 16% and primary production 13%. And in addition to food waste, there is multiple amounts of inedible side streams, for example, peels and straw, and that I already told. So this is plus for this food waste amount. So there is a huge potential to decrease food waste and intensify utilization of side streams. And there is a big potential to gain cost savings and develop new business. And I will tell more about those new business opportunities later. But there is also environmental benefits because if food is wasted, all the emissions that are born in the food chain uh, are coming from because of nothing. Um, because um, a big part of the emissions is coming from primary produ production, which is the very first beginning. So if this is cultivated for nothing, all emissions are for nothing. So how we know about these food waste amounts? We have food waste studies, and this is about households. We had 380 households participated in this study, and it was in September 2010. Uh, 
From those households, we asked some background information, like size and type of the household, what is their age and education, their income, where are they living, are they living in city, town or countryside, uh, what is their shopping and consumer behavior, and what is their attitudes to food waste. Then they had this two weeks period that they waited all their food waste. And it, it was only avoidable food waste, not for example if they ate banana, they didn't wait banana peels. But if they bought good banana from grocery store and then they didn't eat it, just put it to cabbage, then they had to wait it. So they had a diary from a two-week period. And of the, uh, also in that same period, they needed to gather all the shopping receipts. And then we looked what they have had bought and what they put to garbage. OK, what type of food is wasted in and here it's related to amount of food that they bought. So most of the food that was wasted was potato, bread and fruits, over 8% each of them. And least wasted food was snacks and butter and oil, which made less than 1%. So when we compared the food they bought to, 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 to the food they wasted, we noticed that every twelfth bread was wasted. And altogether about six percent food they bought was wasted. Well, waste of food is of course a waste of money because when you bought some food from, from shop, you have to pay it, and if you don't eat it, it's a waste of money. So we calculated how much euros per year these households wasted. So in a single household, it was little over 100 euros per year. But in households with children, it was almost 300 euros per year but because households with children had an average 3.8 person, so some had one children, some two, and so on. But the amount per person was less than in a single household, 74 euros per year. So when we calculated all, all Finnish households the yearly food waste is worth of hundreds of millions of euros. Okay, next. As I told you, there is some inedible parts coming from food chain and still edible food. Those inedible parts should be valorized for value-added product, products uh, that would enhance industrial symbiosis and total optimization. And still edible food should go back to food chain to consumption. And in Luke, we have tried to find some uh, practices to enhance circular economy and some kind of practices to prevent and decrease food waste and practices for redistribution of food waste as food, so that it's not going to waste, that it's not going back to consumption. And also valorization of food waste and side flows, especially for value-added products, and also solutions to recycle and optimize nutrients. And we have several pro projects ongoing in area of food waste, like Nordic food waste projects. And how to decrease food waste? We had this um, SAS Syeda License to Eat project where we 
uh, created website that motivates people to redu re reduce the amount of food waste in households. And in we website, you can find recipe search, search, which finds recipes combining ingredients that you already have in your fridge. For example, you can put their eggs and cheese and something else that you have, and it finds recipe, recipes that use these ingredients. Of course, you have to buy something more. It's never only these two or three in ingredients recipes, but it helps to find how to use these. There's also portion planner. For example, how much pasta you need to cook if you have a three person. And tips and ideas how to minimize food waste and save money, and some facts about food waste. We also had this experiment on sharing food in this project. Uh, in this test experiment, we had one housing company from Helsinki, and we tried to find out whether it is possible to reduce amount of household food waste by sharing food in the neighbors. So in this apartment house, there was a cold storage cellar and we created a food sharing point there. It was called Herkkupesa, treat nest. And all inhabitants from that apartment house could bring their vegetables and fruits or an up unopened food packages if they have, had not reached their best buy date. Also some already cook, cooked food could be brought there. And they could also uh, post inform information that they have left food to treat nest in their Facebook site that people do not necessarily have to go to the cellar to see if there's something that they can see from Facebook. Okay, so then business opportunities. We had in beginning of this month, don't, food, don't Waste Food Week, it was already, I'm not sure, maybe fourth time. But last year there was over 4,000 food portions made from leftover food of one grocery store, and they were delivered to the people that wanted to get them. Of course, this was free, but it um, pointed that uh, people are willing to eat food that is from leftover food. Also, you can open food waste restaurant or catering services. In Finland, we have one restaurant that use food waste for the cooking, and it started in June this year. Uh, and also in from waste to taste project, they offer catering services that utilizes food waste. Then valorization of food waste and inedible parts. Both can go to biogas process when you can produce energy, nutrients and carbon dioxide at the same time. It's a very efficient way to recycle and utilize nutrients. It has also economic and environmental benefits. And it also has possibility to produ produce fertilizers for organic farming, because they cannot use any mineral fertilizers. Mm. And also digested from biogas process can be used as such, or for the processed into fertilizers, fertilizer products, which could be, for example, separation to liquid and solid parts, recovery of ammoniacal nitrogen, and pyrolysis to biochar. I was asked if I can tell some economic values also in my presentation. 
but it is not easy to estimate how much economic value the, this kind of fertilizer products could have uh, because markets have not yet developed enough to calculate values. Of course, we have a couple of biogas plants in Finland that are uh, producing or making some food processing and have some fertilizer products, but they are still quite expensive and this is the reason why markets are not yet ready. But of course, um, fertilizers for organic farming has been quite expensive, so it would be a good opportunity to produce, produce fertilizers for organic farming and I think they are ready to buy, uh, pay a little more than uh, conventional farming. But of course you need to know what kind of raw materials you can put to your biogas plant that it is good for organic farming. Here you can see some pictures about our um, biogas plants in Luke. So we have in different locations farm, farm scale plant, pilot scale and laboratory, laboratory scale facilities where we have done these experiments. Okay. Then what to do with those inedible parts? Pyrolysis is one option and it's interesting option for treatment of various biomasses because pyrolysis gases can be used for, for energy production. However, the high concentration of carbon dioxide bring, brings challenges to gas upgrading. And in pyrolysis process, it also produces biochar, which is upgraded fertilizer for agriculture. And it has really good properties and good agronomic performance. There's also some synergies between biogas plant and pyrolysis. For example, surplus heat can be used to dry the biomass. Also, digested can be compacted as biochar and then used as uh, fertilizer. And there's some possibilities to upgrade energy products. Uh, then, other option is bioprocessing, which uh, so fractionation or further processing of biomasses in biorefineries enable the conversion in the range of innovative bio-based pro products. For example, functional or biologically active components, dietary supplements, or pharmaceutical products. And fermentation of agrofood byproducts has tested in Luke, and this test proved that there will be improved nutrient availability, digestibility, and added nutritional value, and also extended shelf life, and it removed substances harmful to human or animal health. And here's some references from studies that are behind my presentation. Thank you. Um, thank you, Taya. Um, I, I ask you to, to stay for a while here because uh, <clears throat> uh, looking at the, at the clock, it seems that I have not really been able to, to keep uh, the time frames here properly. Um, and uh, I would suggest that uh, uh, since we had opportunity to uh, pose many questions for uh, Kieran and, and, and Henry, so we could do the same for, for Taya now, and uh, we just skip the sort of discussion part here. We can then probably move uh, to lunch a little bit earlier, if this is okay with everyone. Yeah? Uh, so uh, I already had a question. Um, 
the uh, food waste restaurants. The, yeah. This really seemed uh, uh, an interesting uh, initiative. Um, I think I have also uh, uh, seen uh, at least uh, two or three in, in Great Britain, uh, the same concept, and also in, in Netherlands, I think. But uh, I, I don't really understand how, how they work, how this uh, food waste restaurants functions. Uh, I'm not quite sure because I have never been there, but I think they ha need to have really flexible uh, menu because they cannot know what they are going to <laughs> have every day. So every day different menu, <laughs> maybe. But do they collect the food waste uh, from someone else, or is it uh, their own? Uh, no, no, I think it's coming from uh, uh, retail shops, uh, grocery shops. So something that is going to uh, lost their best before date, so they are bringing it to the restaurant. Yeah. As I have the microphone, I, w I will use it uh, once again for another question. Um, uh, this uh, uh, food waste uh, uh, in households, uh, I could see that uh, the families are really wasting a lot yeah. uh, compared to, to others. Um, as I also have two kids and uh, we were part of the same uh, survey in Estonia and uh, then we actually uh, witnessed uh, how much we discarded. Um, and uh, then I was thinking that if, uh, for example, in, in your survey, have you also looked at uh, the income levels and then compare it to the amount of waste? I is there yeah. any differences? Like, I mean, the more welfare, the more likely you are to waste. And yes. Um, yeah, it was done because it was asked what is the income, but I really don't remember <laughs> what was the difference. But of course, when you are comparing these households with children per person, the amount is smaller than in single households. So it's only per household bigger. But yeah, I, I, I would assume that there would be a difference if you are a very low income family, you don't, really don't waste any food. So food is too cheap. No, no, it's not. <laughs> uh, I would like to have a comment and uh, very good uh, presentation. Uh, we have made in Estonia the same type of uh, study, uh, principally on the same uh, methodology also. But what came out was perhaps surprising that uh, in the very low income families, the uh, generation of the food waste per person was even bigger. And uh, the explanation was obviously that uh, the people who have uh, pretty few money actually, if they go to the shop, they buy with the very lowered price uh, food, where mm. already the time remained to consume it is very short. And they tend to buy it more than yeah, they actually yeah. can then use. And then they often uh, just throw away even more than the, perhaps uh, such average consumers. Oh. Principally, and just yeah. to uh, explain that uh, this restaurant, actually this Finnish restaurant, is already opening a branch in Tart well, in Tallinn, I think so. Soon it was in news, which is very good news, I think so. But uh, just to uh, explain that uh, the British Embassy uh, in Estonia have been very active uh, in this food waste issue, and they organised the ambassador himself, um, the uh, public event, so to say, for media. I mean also. Uh, with some 30 guests or something, uh, and that was exactly on the principle that. Um, uh, big uh, retail chain, uh, but they are usually on the daily business, they are delivering the food which is yet eatable to the food banks. And just part of that that usually is going to the food banks was delivered to the restaurant and that was uh, made to the, to the meals and that was really everybody agreed that it was very, very um, good meals. Yeah. 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 Also in Finland we have had some kind of uh, food waste dinner events and everything like that. We really try to show people that food waste is not always ready for carpets. Sometimes it could be eaten. Yes. Um, we all know that uh, big supermarkets waste, like the food will go to waste probably. And uh, there has also developed this kind of 
like a movement of uh, um, like dive uh, how it's called uh, dumpster diving like uh, some young people go to the the recycle bins uh, and and find a lot of lot of vegetables that are actually completely good to eat and everything so is Finland or, or, or you uh, dealing also with the waste that comes from the big supermarkets because they have loads of food that every day go to waste probably, or I don't know. Uh, yes, uh, I didn't hear everything because... Uh, the last uh, question? Yeah. Uh, the last thing, uh, I was asking if you are dealing also with the food that goes to the waste from supermarkets, like uh, big ones. Yes, yeah, we have uh, already uh, some st studies about how much food is going to waste from supermarkets and now there's a new legislation in Finland that it's easier for food shops to deliver their food to other places that they could be used. It was easier, they really needed to put everything to carpets, but now it's easier to this in other places. Um, yeah, so uh, thank you very much again for your engagement here. A uh, small present for you as well. Thank you. Yeah.